Hey guys, welcome back to Ranger Survival and Fieldcraft. I'm Andrew and what I have for you today is scavenging for survival. Stand by. All right, one of my favorite examples or historical vignettes of scavenging comes by way of World War II. First Lieutenant Leon Crane, pilot, had to ditch out of his aircraft over the Alaskan tundra, and he survived initially with just a pocket knife, a book of matches, and a letter from his father that he eventually used as tinder to get a fire going. He survived that way until such time that he found a dilapidated hunter's cabin, used the items inside to survive, and he was eventually recovered after 81 days below zero in the Alaskan bush. Now, taking from that example, we should always have items in our pockets to survive with, or our everyday carry, whatever you want to call it. We should always have some sort of cutting tool. In this case, we just have that Super Tool 300 Leatherman. We've got our lighter with duct tape wrapped around it, acts as a flame extender, but we've got that lighter for instant gratification to start a fire. And then, high calorie energy bar that we get to slip in our pockets, acts as a meal replacement bar, something to put in our stomachs. And then on top of a cutting tool, way to start fire, and a snack in our pockets, I carry a few other items, a large bandana or cotton cloth, a hank of paracord, and then just an emergency e-light for use in case we get stuck out after dark. If we have a pocket survival kit on us and we're using the scavenging method to find things to enhance our survival, there are probably a few things that we need to focus on first. And that being, I call the rule of five, where we look for containers, covering items, cordages. Then we look for constructibles, things to help us build tools or build signaling devices. And then finally, consumables being that fifth thing, the things that we're going to use to get a fire going and start that fire, or food that we would eat right away, things that we would consume quickly once we find those items to affect survival. Let's talk about our first seat containers really quick. All right, here are some examples of scavenged items that we can find in the field or possibly in a dumpster along a roadside. Metal can, we've got a pop can, glass bottle, and then some plastic bottle. We can use the glass and plastic to pasteurize water, and then the cans to boil water. We can even add some wire to our large coffee can here and create our scavenged billy can. These are some examples. Cool party trick. So instead of using this bottle as a container, we filled it up with water almost to the neck and then using downward pressure, 
struck the top of the bottle and what that does is expand the air inside the bottle compresses that water and then just blows out the bottom of that bottle to give us something to work with to create a tool all we have to do then pick up some rocks that we can use for just a hasty flint nap kit along with a little deer tine that we found and we can flint nap the bottom of that bottle into a nice little cutting edge we can use this to cut into things if we don't want to waste our knife or our blade on different tasks we can use this to cut into food and different things list is endless for things that we can use as constructibles or things that we can use to build tools, to take down material, to make life just a little bit easier so we can build and craft things from the landscape or from items that we find. We have just a few examples here. If we know how to build a bucksaw frame, an old discarded bucksaw blade we can use and just fashion those materials from the landscape and build a saw to take down material. We have our commando saw between two toggles, just wire to take down material. Zip ties, easy construction like with our tripod. Smaller gauge wire we can use for snares and traps. We have fish hooks and fish line that we can find down at the water's edge. Razor blades and safety pins we can find in medicine cabinets or discarded. And then we have cordage, just small bits of cordage that we can keep. Floss along with a needle we can use for thread to repair items or possibly make sutures and then tin foil emergency signal or reflector and then we can use it as a way to cook food or boil water the old usgi bungee cord slingshot with some duct tape and cordage and then finally duct tape find duct tape just about everywhere grab a huge spool of it and there's not much that we can't do with duct tape but these are just a few examples of constructible items that we could grab or scavenge for that would benefit us
cordages. It goes without saying cordage, one of the hardest things to recreate from the landscape. So we're always looking for cordage if we don't know how to make it or we don't have the time to make it. So we want small, large diameter cordage, bank line and paracord here is an example. Paracord is ubiquitous nowadays. We can probably find this anywhere. Straps, any type of strap like this nylon webbing or moving tie down straps, cargo straps, whatever we can find. Straps can be used for a variety of purposes, but having a long enough length, we can make straps for an improvised hobo backpack. Bungee cords, bungee cords are great. We can find these in the back of trucks, at construction sites, on the side of the road, outside of auto repair shops, wherever, in the trash, but we can use these for quick shelter setup and then also to tie down gear. Bungee cords, also used for improvisation, creating a slingshot. And then even though it's part of a constructible, we can still use duct tape in the cordage if this is all we have to fasten things together, make tools, or build shelter. What can't you use duct tape for? So these are just some examples of consumable items that we can scavenge. Now we've got dryer lint from a laundromat, some cotton balls from a medicine cabinet, then even some steel wool from a janitor's closet that we can use for fire lighting. Same thing for hand sanitizer, ubiquitous nowadays. We can find this, use it for hygiene, but then also use it as a fire starter. Cardboard and smaller tins, we can use those to make small stoves and get the cardboard to light a fire. Wax. We can use crayons we can find in a restaurant or just discarded and use these as flame extenders. We've got household bleach. Grab a little bit of this from a utility closet and we can disinfect water for consumption. We've got our spoon. We can find this just about anywhere in trash or outside a restaurant. Use this for eating with. And then tin foil or foil from a gum wrapper. We can use this as a makeshift container as well as starting fires or a reflector. And then we can use the gum itself, the wrapper to help start fires, but we can also chew on the gum to help stave off hunger. And then finally, some old broken glasses that we might be able to find. 
put these together to create a lens and be able to start firing using solar ignition. Just some examples, there are a variety out there, but these are just a few that we should aim for. Not the prettiest shelter I've ever built, but you can see the utility in bungee cords and then a tarp like this one. We can find these tarps just about anywhere. I think I see them all the time caught up in farm fence around people's properties. We can just pull those down. Bungee cords, how many times you've been driving down the highway and seen bungee cords on the side of the road? We can pick those up and use them to construct a very quick shelter to get out of the elements. Now on top of the availability of having a tarp and bungees to put up a shelter quickly, Grab trash bags as another example of things to go for for cover elements. It can be an improvised poncho or you can even fill it up with all this debris and make a browse bed. If the forest floor is wet, you can get up off the ground and sleep on this to stay warm through the night. Next, any cloth material, especially 100% cotton, we can use for a variety of things, but an old shemag like this or a towel we can use to stay warm. Then we can also scavenge blankets. I don't know how many times I've been down the road and seen towels or blankets or remnants of somebody's bed on the side of the road. But if we have to scavenge on roadsides, we can find old blankets like this one, even moving blankets and wrap up with those at night. But these are just some of the examples of things we can go for for scavenging cover elements. Now one field tip I wanted to share with you guys today is something I stumbled upon recently. It's not uncommon to find in cattle country because it's been used by farmers for a long time as a natural windbreak and fence for cattle, but it was also used by Native Americans for a long time to craft bows for hunting and combat, and that is the Osage orange tree. This is just the fruit that it drops. It's not worth the squeeze to get all the little seeds out of here, but if you find one of these chewed up, it's a good sign that there's other animals in the area, like squirrels and deer, that will feed on this. So that's a good indicator of potential game in the area. Another good tip about this tree is that the Osage Orange was used for a long time, like I said, to make bows for Native Americans for hunting and archery because it is a hardwood, extremely hard, and it is incredibly rot resistant. This is a good resource to know that's in the area because we can take branches from this while the tree is still living and then fashion different implements like a bow or maybe a war club or a throwing stick out of because this tree is extremely hard and dense and rot resistant could be a good resource to have to build tools out in the wild. Scavenging for survival is still a viable option. It's especially good for individuals when we only have what's on our person and we can find different resources and put those things to use. This is also great for individuals that want to have a cheap kit or a free kit to take those things, use them for a while, and then once they break down, we can discard them, pick up some new ones because we know where to look and find those resources. But I hope you guys like this video. If you did like this video, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, leave me a comment in the comment section. I always appreciate your feedback. I want to thank you guys for everything you do for me and for the channel, for your likes, your views, your subscriptions, your comments, your feedback, and your shares. And I'll be back with another video as soon as I can, guys. Thanks. Mm -hmm.